Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to near the Canadian border where canola is king. I'm Michelle Rook here in Aberdeen, South Dakota. This headed this year's Governor's Ag Summit. And a North Dakota cattle breeder is one of the top in the country. We'll tell you how he got there. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. North Dakota is hitting the record books this year with a whopping number of canola acres. 1.7 million acres were planted in this state with a majority in Cavalier County. We headed to Langdon, North Dakota where the crop dominates. The beauty of the, the bright yellow, it's almost needs sunglasses some days when it's in full bloom. Cavalier County in northeastern North Dakota is stunning this time of year. Canola in full bloom. Have you ever swam through canola? <laughs> Leslie Lubenow is an NDSU Extension Specialist who works in canola every day. It does have a strong mustard smell. Once you've smelt it, you, you know the smell. Cavalier County is the highest producing county in the state. Kevlar County is known as the canola capital of North Dakota. This year, about 271,000 acres of canola were planted in the county. You can see that this one's mostly done flowering. Makes sense that the Langdon Research Extension Center is the powerhouse for canola research. We're right next to the border. This is a cool place. We're one of the coolest places in North Dakota, so cool season crops do wonderful in our region. Canola hit the area in the 90s and soon became popular. Justin Overby is a farmer and an agronomist in Langdon. It's a good crop for us to grow a good cash, cash crop, but it is a good rotational crop for us too. When canola got introduced to the area, it was we needed a rotational crop because we just couldn't grow wheat and barley every year anymore. But canola can be an expensive crop to grow, especially when compared to other broadleaf crops like soybeans. Put a lot more fertilizer into it, um, seeds expensive, uh, depending what uh, herbicide trait you're using, Roundup versus Liberty, different costs there. And then um, seems like every year we're making a fungicide application. Traditionally, price support has been a lot higher than wheat, making it worth it. Crushed plants around the area like Bungie and Altona, they're offering um, premiums for high oil contents like a Nexera, or there's um, non-GMO premiums for like a Cebus canola. Canola is pressed into oil and much of it in Cavalier County is taken to Halleck, Minnesota, Altona, Manitoba, or West Fargo. The Minnesota Cattlemen's Association tour is one of the biggest of its kind, and this year was no exception. They toured the Glacial Ridge area of West Central Minnesota. Jonathan Knutson went along for a look. We're here at a Minnesota tradition, the annual summer cattle tour. More than a thousand people will attend. We know that there's other states that have beef tours, but we like to think ours is bigger and better. Ashley Coles is with the Minnesota State Cattlemen's Association. She and others say the state has largely avoided the drought ravaging the Dakotas and Montana. For the most part, most of our state has gotten ample water that they've needed, and actually some parts of the state getting too much water. Uh, there are two pockets within our state, though, that very far uh, northwest corner and kind of down a little south central, there's a little pocket as well that um, are having some drought conditions that really could use some water. This year, the cattle tour features an area in central Minnesota known as the Glacial Ridge. It was formed by melting glaciers 30,000 years ago. Much of the area is well suited for cattle. The Glacial Ridge Cattlemen's Association is primarily made up of cow-calf producers. Jim Osley helped to coordinate the tour. He's involved in a family livestock operation and is a livestock specialist with the state egg department. He says weather in his area has been mostly good this summer. Our pastures, uh, hay ground is faring pretty well. Uh, we've had decent amount of moisture. Uh, granted, there's been some pockets that have not received much precipitation. However, the vast majority of the land around here is in, in good condition. Minnesota may be best known for lakes and trees, corn and soybeans. But as this event shows, cattle are important too. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Minnesota has about 18,000 cattle producers. The group rotates its summer tour among 10 different parts of the state. 
Agriculture is a $26 billion industry in South Dakota. Governor Dennis Dugard holds an ag summit every year. The meeting brings the industry together to discuss key issues affecting the state's farmers and ranchers. Michelle Rook was at this year's summit in Aberdeen. The Ag Economy, Innovation and Animal Health headlined this year's South Dakota Governor's Ag Summit here in Aberdeen. Dr. Jim Roth with Iowa State University says a foreign animal disease like foot and mouth could cost agriculture $200 billion over a decade, so they're getting prepared. We've been working with state and federal officials in the industry to develop secure food supply plans and how to slow the spread of the virus. Speakers also talked about antimicrobial resistance in humans and livestock and what the industry is doing to preserve this tool. And how can we manage uh, populations of livestock and animals so that we uh, are maybe less dependent on the use of antibiotics. Mark Lukey with Prairie Aquatech was on an innovations panel and shared how they're using distiller's grain and soybean meal in aquaculture feed. So our first product is a soy-based product where we're buying soybean meal at 46% protein and we're upgrading that to a 70% protein, which is suitable for aquaculture feed formulations. Lieutenant Governor Matt Michaels says the summit also looked at the state of the ag economy and how important it is that we all work together to not only keep markets open, but keep these organizations and producers solvent. In Aberdeen, South Dakota, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Lake Area Tech in Watertown received the Governor's 2017 Ag Ambassador Award. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll hear from a livestock expert on what opening up the beef market in China could mean for U.S. cattle producers. We know that as a consumer, you have several options when applying for automotive credit. So why choose BillionAuto.com? It's simple. BillionAuto.com has a dedicated finance department to work on nothing but your online credit app. We exhaust all specialized lenders, all 17 franchises, and all 7,000 vehicles to find the perfect fit for you. Now think about it. What other website can do this? Put one of our loan specialists to work for you. Apply now. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstock Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. Joining us now is Rachel Endicott. She is the Montana State University Beef Cattle Specialist. Let's talk about China opening up that market. What are you hearing from growers and what do people need to know? Well, I think people are really interested. I think we're still kind of learning about the ins and outs of what China's going to want uh, in regard to what 
specifications they're going to want for beef going over. You know, I think people are wondering about age and source verification and how that's going to work. I think it'll be interesting too as we move forward uh, through the summer sales season to see how that impacts prices. Drought is having a huge impact on our ranchers. A lot of people are thinking about do they need to bring in pears and, and dry lots and cattle throughout the summer rather than they're just running out of grass. People are having to make those hard culling decisions that, well, we probably need to sell some cows, so how do you go about doing that? Folks are having to make some tough decisions. It's drought something that we almost can count on coming back uh, to affect all of us at one point or another. Right. And what about people with uh, talking about prices? Prices are lower. And I'm sure people are looking for ways to add value on their operation. Absolutely. Sometimes we get stuck in thinking about those things like age and source verification, or should I verify these calves as natural, or should they? we do non-hormone treated cattle to try and branch out the export markets that we might be able to um, send those cattle into. Those are things to certainly think about for this year's calf crop. I think some things, though, we kind of forget. We might forget those traditional things like, how, uh, what's the calving distribution look like? Is there a way that we could have more bulls out um, at the beginning of the season, get these cows bred up so we have a tighter calving window, calves that are more uniform and at the same age? Uh, could we use a different breed of bull and take advantage of some heterosis through crossbreeding? So I think uh, there's a nice mix out there and um, it's, it's a fun job to have because I get to talk about the old traditional things that we sometimes forget or take for granted and then talk about the cool cutting edge stuff that's happening as well. All right, Rachel, thanks for joining us today. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you so much. This week's First Crop Stop takes us to West Central Minnesota, where Kurt Stark got his crops in about a week later than usual. Corn, soybeans, and a little wheat are common in West Central Minnesota. We'll check with one farmer to see how the crops look. I would say they're average to maybe a little bit above average, but that all could change real quick if we get to 90 degrees in the next 10 days with no uh, rain. It, it could go downhill really fast because we're fairly short on our subsoil moisture because we've been using quite a bit of it recently. Timely rains are so important. That's true again this summer. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Stark says he needs about an inch of rain a week for the next month or so. Our next crop stop takes us over to central North Dakota. Douglas Ginther raises corn, soybeans, wheat, and barley seven miles north of Devil's Lake. He's had good weather, his small grains are just starting to head, and his corn is thriving in the heat and humidity. I believe this is tall, about as tall as anything I've seen. It has really taken off in the last week. Uh, I said I sprayed it last, last Wednesday, uh, the second time over with Roundup, and it was just right at my knees and now it's up to my shoulders almost yeah and yeah. so uh, this kind of corn here is uh, about I don't know six uh, five and a half feet tall. oh yeah 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 at and, least uh, so, so what, what kind of corn yields do you usually get around oh the last couple of years we've been right at that 140 145 yeah but usually we shoot for 100 125 somewhere in there hopefully you know we don't get too crazy on it we just don't have the varieties up here you know we our days are limited Ginther has about 5,000 acres and his crew custom plants another 12,000 for others in the region this is a crucial time for crop development growers are keeping a close eye on the rain and heat your agri-weather forecast is next and later a North Dakota cattle breeder is one of the top in the country Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco.
Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Celebrate 175 years of Case IH equipment heritage with a limited edition Case skid steer or compact track loader painted with the same red paint of the venerable Case IH farm equipment line. Only 175 are being built and they're going fast. Built to the same specifications on the same assembly line as the award-winning regular Case models, these machines are a working piece of history. Get yours before they're all gone. Hurry in to your local Titan Machinery location or go to www.red175.com to learn more today. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. The calendar rolls on, summer approaching now, the high part of summer for most of the upper Midwest and Great Plains. This is on average the warmest time of the year as we get to late July and the first part of August called the dog days. For a different reason, doesn't have anything to do with dogs, it has to do with the star Sirius being visible in the southern sky this time of year early in the morning. Pattern is about the same, hot and dry in the western part of the plains and generally with some spotty, heavier th uh, thunderstorms. Some areas have had some pretty heavy rain from time to time over the last week, but the drought monitor indicates much of western North Dakota and eastern Montana is still extremely dry. Things are a little better in the Red River Valley, although there are certainly some dry pockets. Same thing with South Dakota. The west is just scorched. The eastern part of South Dakota, it's a little better. And there are some dry pockets now beginning to show up through Iowa, although overall Iowa is still one good heavy two-inch rain away from having plenty of moisture around. The weather pattern for the time being, this ridge of high pressure over the Rocky Mountains continues. The trough of low pressure continues coming down from Hudson Bay, which gives us northwesterly winds a lot of the time, which means that the weather pattern has been fairly hot in the west, not is hot over in the eastern edge of the Corn Belt, and in between this jet stream will occasionally deliver a thunderstorm through the northern plains, but the end results have been not that impressive rain-wise. Southeastern states this week will simply not be that hot. The hot weather will be in the Rocky Mountains, occasionally pointing out into the Great Plains, and there will be some days, I think, toward the end of the week that get pretty hot in the northern plains. Also, I'm expecting at least one chance of thunderstorms to pass through the northern plains region, but overall, just spotty thunderstorms in the Rocky Mountains and down in the southeast where we're starting to get into the tropical hurricane season and the moisture levels down here are so high. The stormy weather pattern, where it rains, it may rain a lot, but it's going to be fairly spotty, certainly this week. With the jet stream kind of still in the same shape for next week, which would be August, July 30th to August 5th, even a bit of a building up ridge, there's going to be probably more areas that get drier then get wetter, but there will be the occasional passing th storm complex through the plains, which all of which and any of which will result in the possibility of locally substantial rainfall, but probably not overall widespread substantial rainfall. The hot weather will get beaten back from time to time or it goes back to the west. Not much relief from the heat in the west. There may be a temporary trough carving out a little further south into the middle west. Maybe some late summer cool weather for the eastern part of the Corn Belt. But overall, it's looking about the same. The dog days will mean extremely hot weather in the high plains, Montana, western North Dakota, western South Dakota, western Nebraska, places like that, and just probably more typical summer temperatures from Iowa eastward. Rainfall, you got to get under the right cloud. We know that as a consumer, you have several options when applying for automotive credit. So why choose BillionAuto.com? It's simple. BillionAuto.com has a dedicated finance department to work on nothing but your online credit app. 
We exhaust all specialized lenders, all 17 franchises, and all 7,000 vehicles to find the perfect fit for you. Now think about it. What other website could do this? Put one of our loan specialists to work for you. Apply now. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs and the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I have them, times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. A Western North Dakota cattle breeder is making a name for himself in the volatile livestock industry. Ryan Topp, who started Top Herefords in 1988, has become one of the nation's elite registered breeders. As Jenny Schlecht found, the business really took a leap forward when Top Herefords started breeding ranch-ready cattle for traits like reproductive and feed efficiency. Ryan Topp grew up in the cattle business. His family transitioned to commercial cattle after his father's death. But in 1988, Topp decided to get back into registered Herefords. I think cattle that have as good a look as you're going to find anywhere in this breed. Topp's philosophy is to be better than the many good seed stock providers out there with superior genetics and superior customer service. We wanted to give something back to the person or to the operations that were providing us financial income. And so we focused on feeder calf marketing programs, as well as um, replacement heifer programs to um, instill some profitability in, in these ranches that we're buying our genetics. The main goal of that customer service is to help them be more profitable. If we can get you a, a good product, 773 pounds, and then come in there with our customer service, and that customer service might be just talking about your health protocol. It might be talking about your calving period. It might be talking about how you used to traditionally market cattle. It might be a combination of all these things put together that makes your ranch more profitable. Top says the biggest changes he's seen over the years are the increasing herd sizes and increasing efficiency of operations but high input costs mean lower profit margins. If we can add 20 $30, $40 on a per calf basis, you've got a 200 head herd, that, that becomes a significant dollar amount. So even if we can add $20 to your break even, that to us, that's significant, that keeps you in business. Top's goal for his business is to keep improving his customer service. In Grace City, North Dakota, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Top Herefords has alliances with several feedlot companies across the country. Still ahead on AgWeek TV, the famous Budweiser Clydesdales were on the streets of downtown Fargo this week. Find out why. When the water's high and your yields are low, cause your fields have no place for water to flow. Just one call takes care of it all. Call on Field Drainage Incorporated. Call on Field Drainage Incorporated. Call on Field Drainage. Experts in 
Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. Celebrate 175 years of Case IH equipment heritage with a limited edition Case skid steer or compact track loader painted with the same red paint of the venerable Case IH farm equipment line. Only 175 are being built and they're going fast. Built to the same specifications on the same assembly line as the award-winning regular Case models, these machines are a working piece of history. Get yours before they're all gone. Hurry in to your local Titan Machinery location or go to www.red175.com to learn more today. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Egg Week TV, presented by Billion Auto. It's not something you hear or see every day. <laughs> Hundreds of people lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the world-famous Budweiser Clydesdales. The team of eight pulled an old-time wagon and delivered ceremonial cases of beer to downtown Fargo establishments. Even Clyde the Dalmatian was along for the ride. Longtime fixtures of the brewing company's marketing team, the Clydesdales, are some of the most recognizable animals in the world and have been featured in many Super Bowl commercials. The crew was in town for a full week. People just love them. A lot of times people aren't able to see them up close and personal, and this is an opportunity to see them. I like to stand beside them, catch them, see really how big they are, because they truly are gentle giants. The Budweiser Clydesdales trace their history back to 1933 when they toured the country to celebrate the repeal of Prohibition. We'll look at what it takes to travel the country with the big team in next week's show. Thanks for watching this week's edition of AgWeek TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.